Uh, welcome, welcome, everyone. My name is Nicholas Tan from Kananga Futures Sunram Bahad. Thank you for spending your precious time to join our webinar tonight. Please take note that uh, futures and options trading involves substantial risk due to leverage factor and may not be suitable for all investors. This webinar is purely for educational purposes. Kananga Futures Sunram Bahad accepts no liability whatsoever for any direct or consequential loss arising from any use of the content of this webinar. Today, we have Mr. Chong here, and he's going to share with us on uh, Asia focus, Hong Kong, its ups and down, and did you miss the boat? So, without further delay, I would like to kickstart our webinar by welcoming our speaker today, Mr. Chong. Hello, a uh, very good evening to all. Uh, welcome to another episode of our Kananga Futures webinar series. Today, we are going to cover um, Hong Kong and okay the. After attending this uh, webinar, the key takes away will be the understanding of Hong Kong fundamental economically and also market. And then why trading the indexes in Hong Kong offer better exposure and the important factors to work to watch for, of course. And, and we're also covering who trades Hang Seng index futures and who trades the hash futures and the reason behind it and last but not least we are going to cover the market outlook okay this is the usual disclaimer that we are going to show all the participants on the confidentiality of the contents okay today's agenda first thing we are going to cover the fundamental of hong kong market uh, then we're going to introduce about the Hang Seng Index Futures and also the Hershey Index Futures and the justification to trade this futures contract and of course the factors, important factors to watch for. Okay, first thing, the, the fundamental of Hong Kong economy, most importantly, it is a free market economy highly dependent on international trade and finance. Okay, the value of goods and services trade, including silver side of re-export, is about four times of the GDP. You have to take note on this. This is re-export because the available land in Hong Kong is quite limited. So, so their strategy is to, to encourage economic activity is by, by introducing free trades that is, that is good for, for export and importing of goods into and out of uh, Hong Kong. Okay, uh, the Hong Kong dollar is actually well managed by the Hong Kong monetary body, which is back to the US dollar, which is, is maintained and established at uh, 1983. Okay, it is also a second uh, international hub for China, Chinese renminbi um, transactions. Okay, uh, this is meaning to say that um, those uh, organizations who would like to have exposure or doing trade related to China in renminbi, they can have the option not to park the money in mainland China and to park the money in Hong Kong, which is offer a more free trade and fair and complete um, justice systems. Okay, then if the economy of Hong Kong have heavy reliance on have foreign trade and investment, and it is very vulnerable to all those global financial crisis, volatility, or even economic slowdown. Okay, this is the next few slides will be covering all the econ key economic data about Hong Kong economy. This is the first thing will be the real GDP growth. Okay, as you can see, as the GDP actually peaked near 2017 and st started to slow down gradually and it is now in the negative due to the unrest currently having politically. This is the uh, real GDP growth by selected component. First thing, as you can see, the domestic fixed capital formation having the biggest drop, okay, followed by export of goods and also export of services. Okay. And this will be the GDP compositions. A uh, bigger chunk of it, 68.3% are uh, comprised of private consumption. And the sec 
Second most important one will be net bonus domestic fixed capital formations, then followed by government consumption. The top three. Okay, the key industry in Hong Kong economy, first thing will be the 21.5% 21 in trading and logistic, followed by financial services. And the third one will be professional services and then next will be the tourism and followed by other sectors. Okay, in terms of the exports of commodity, uh, electronic comprise the biggest uh, portion, 68.3%, and followed by clothing. And you might be wondering why uh, uh, places as with land as limited as Hong Kong could have uh, electronic export uh, later i will explain okay and this will be the look the destination or country destination that hong kong uh, major export market will be first thing of course mainland china followed by the eu and then the us and asian and india for top five okay in terms of exports of services the because uh Portion will be from travel industry, then followed by transportation, and the third one, financial services and other business services. Okay, in terms of the export destination of services, uh, also, it is the first will be mainland China, followed by US, UK, Japan, and Singapore. Okay. To explain why um, Hong Kong export a lot of electronic from the earlier slide is because of um, the terms called re-exporting. So as you can see that this is a trend of the export um, demography. The yellow will be the domestic export, meaning to say products actually produced in Hong Kong itself. But this uh, export has been gradually decreasing and it has evolved itself to be a re-export country. I mean, why why this, this will take place is because of Hong Kong free economy policy or free trade economy policy that offer um, um, free import and export uh, duties that encourage a lot of country to export to Hong Kong first and then we export it to other destinations to avoid uh, import duties actually or levies. Okay, in terms of FDI, as you can see that it is uh, getting improving and higher and higher in terms of foreign direct investment. Okay, this is uh, the the amount funds that is coming from the respective country the top one will be british virgin island which is a tax haven then followed by mainland china and then the third one is cayman island netherlands bermuda and singapore as you can see the within this list the, there is already three um um, what you call this uh, tax haven country, which is British Virgin Island, Cayman Island, and also Bermuda. Okay, this is uh, covering regional headquarters and office that is uh, formed in Hong Kong itself. Okay, as you can see that um, the headquarters, regional headquarters is actually quite significant in terms of numbers and the location of parent company of this headquarters is comprised of from us japan mainland china uk germany or are mostly a developed country <clears throat> and then the major line of business of these uh, regional headquarters will be for source one import export trade wholesales or retail then professional and business services finance, banking, transportation, and IT, of course. Okay, this is the uh, economic data of Hong Kong itself. Okay, some data. Population is stood at around 7.5 million populations. GDP is uh, 
365 billion US dollar for year 2018. Okay, GDP per capita is 48, nearly 49,000. And currently the real, the year 2018 GDP is at 3% growth. Trade balance is negative, meaning to say that Hong Kong itself is actually an import-oriented um, economy, which is um, due to limited of export co of commodity. Okay, and inflation is pretty much unmanageable at 2.4%, and um, employment rate is actually quite low as compared to other uh, financial country. And retail sales growth at 8.7% year 2018. Number of visitors, 65 million. Uh, as you can see, mostly are achieving growth. A number of visit, uh, sorry, uh, visitor growth is at 11.4% year 2018. And our minimum hourly wages, 34 Hong Kong dollar per hour. Corporate tax is maximum at 16.5 percent personal income tax is at 50 percent maximum okay this is the uh, trade relation that has been established by hong kong with the global uh, trade organization which is uh, why they they are having a good relationship with all the economic body that enable them to implement their free trade with this respective uh, organization uh, country members okay the trade policy hong kong is a free port that does not levy or cu any custom tariff on imports or export except for only liquors tobacco hydrocarbon oil and methane alcohol other than that it is basically free of import duties or tariff okay and then all you have to do to to carry to to perform trade with hong kong is to get the certifi certifications and, and then you can basically import and export everything without any um, tariff. And then you are actually required to declare your uh, import and export goods with the Hong Kong custom within 14 days. So this requirement enables them to compose a very accurate data for their port um, operations utilization uh, arrangement. Okay, this is subject to, of course, certain conditions like shipping company, airlines, freight company, we have to register with the trade industry department and, and are exempted from import exporting licensing requirement if you are belongs to this category. Okay, the free trade agreement currently in force, of course, with, is with uh, mainland China and then uh, some other big country. Uh, Every trade, uh, free trade agreement here will be involving Hong Kong and China together with other respective country. And uh, the FTA sign, just sign will be recently will be with Australia and currently in negotiation will be with uh, Maldive. Okay, then we are going to cover some fundamental of the underlying indexes of Hong Kong, which is the Hang Seng Index which is launched at, on uh, 1969, which consists of 50 large cap stocks representing about 60% of the entire Hong Kong exchange capitalizations. Okay, uh, weighting method will be free fruit price weight, shares of, based on the shares outstanding multiplied by the stock price. Okay, the current market cap is stood at 8.53 trillion Hong Kong dollar. Okay, it is the leading barometer of Hong Kong stock market and also one of the renowned index in Asia and widely used by financial institutions as a performance benchmark. Okay, this will be the constituent of uh, 50 co um, counters linked to the index and I'm sure that you are quite familiar with some of the names listed here. This is the top 30. Uh, top 30. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, uh, I wish to highlight that British may change from time to time based on the announcement by the exchange, of course. And the second slide will, here will be consists of counters from 30 years, 
31st to the 50 counters. <clears throat> okay, in terms of uh, industry, we think uh, financial sectors uh, consist of the biggest uh, contribution to the index, which is the which is uh, for the 8.73 percent, followed by communication and services, real estate, energies, and utilities. Top five. Okay, this will be the Hang Seng China Enterprise Index. Also, we call it the hash share indexes. Okay, it consists of 50 large cap stock. That is uh, actually mainland China company doing listing in the Hong Kong exchange. This is consists of both red chips and P chips company. Basically, red chips meaning here is a um, company that are, that are government owned by the government of China. P chips basically is the private sector owned company of China. Okay, it's also a free float price weight with by calculating outstanding share multiplied by stock price. Okay, current market capitalization at 5.21 trillion Hong Kong dollar. Okay, this is actually a benchmark that reflects Hong Kong uh, companies' performance listed in Hong I'm um, sorry, China listed company performance listed in Hong Kong. So, okay, this is the top 50 uh, counters with some of them are having branch in our country as well, which is the ICB, mainly the, uh, the banks and also some technology IT company. <clears throat> okay, in terms of industry, retail, financial still the top one, and followed by communication, energy, real estate, and consumer discretionary, the top five. <clears throat> okay. If you are to treat to uh, treat the uh, indexes, basically these are the twenty counters that is listed concurrently in both the Hang Seng Index and also the Hash Share Index. So if you are to get the the bench the index movement, basically you can actually uh, monitor these twenty counters movement to determine the price of the index. Okay, in terms of the uh, index futures contract, we are covering the contract specs for Hang Seng Index Futures. There are two contracts here. One is the standard contracts, and the second will be the mini contracts. Okay, the underlying instrument is still uh, Hang Seng Index. Contract size, uh, standard contract is actually 50 Hong Kong dollar per point, where the mini contract is 10 Hong Kong dollar per point. Okay. And the available contract months is for standard contract is spot month, next calendar month, next two calendar month, and also the quarter month, followed by five December months. Okay, for the mini contract is spot, spot month, next calendar month, and next two calendar quarter months. Okay, trading hours. Okay, as you can see here is uh, Malaysia time, 9.15 a.m. until 12 p.m. And then market will pause for one hour and resume trading at 1 p.m. until 4.30 p.m. Okay, it, this uh, index futures contract are having a T plus one session which start at 5.15 p.m. until the next morning 3 a.m. Okay. okay, last business day will be the last transaction day proceeding the con proceeding one the immediate business day proceeding to last business day of the month which means that let's say assuming this month the last business day is actually today 28 is actually the last trading day for the futures contract for november contract because 29 november will be the last business day so today actually is the expiry date for november november contract okay this is a financially settled uh contract Okay, based on the calculation of average quotation of Hang Seng Index taken five minutes interval during the last trading days. Okay, the margin for normal con standard contract per lot is actually uh, Malaysian Ringgit 50 
6,500 about approximately. And for the mini contract is actually 11,319 ringgit Malaysia. Okay, as for the hash share index futures, the underlying of course is the hash share index itself. Also uh, similar to the Hang Seng contract. This is actually 50 Hong Kong dollar per point for standard contract and 10 Hong Kong dollar per point for the mini contracts. Okay, uh, all the contract months, trading hours, last trading day settlement is pretty much the same except for the margin. For the hash share normal contract, the margin is actually about Ringgit Malaysia 22,200. And for the mini contract, it's actually about 4,500. Okay, uh, this is uh, the uh, hourly data that I have extracted out from uh, Reuters. This is actually the period of quarter four last year to quarter three this year. This is consists of all the average volume calculated hourly for this period. As you can see that this is to show you the first thing, the active hour of this, uh, the Hang Seng Index Futures contract, which is start from about 10 a.m. Actually, it's 9, 9 a.m. This, this time is basically from 9 to 10, and then all the way to 5 p.m. But in the event, let's say you choose to treat the uh, T plus one session, the, the volume is not that bad actually and liquidity actually is not an issue during this T plus one session. As you can see, uh, on hourly basis, it can easily achieve about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 volume per hour. So next will be the mini Hang Seng Index as also the same active trading hour will be their cash market open hours here followed by the uh, T plus one section which is also quite consistent in terms of uh, liquidity. So you don't have to worry about illiquidity here if you trade the T plus one. This is the uh, hash share normal standard contracts and then followed by the uh, mini hash share contracts, which is which the volume is uh, relatively lower as compared to the previous three contracts. Okay, uh, in terms of who treat these uh, Hang Seng indexes and hash share indexes futures contract, um, actually I have uh, did a bit of uh, Digging, I, I actually, to the extent of, I call the Hong, Hong Kong exchange uh, person in charge to check for, do you have a data in terms of the demography of who actually participate in these uh, four contracts. And to my disappointment, they, they informed me that uh, the Hong Kong exchange never uh, so-called implement or require all the broker to report the category of trader of their client to the exchange. So that is why they don't have the data in terms of the participant. But generally, of course, because it is quite a, a time-proven index and also Hong Kong itself as a financial center, uh, it is highly uh, possible that this will be the participant of the index futures contract. First thing, of course, is the domestic retails and then followed by foreign retail, which is uh, uh, people like uh, our clients. And then you have domestic financial institution, foreign financial institutions. This actually also consists of uh, those, how you call this, um, insurance company and also investment banks. Okay, followed by fund managers. And for those brokers that offer contract for differences uh, products, they actually also hedge the, their CFT position with these indexes. Okay, of course, the hedge fund manager and high frequency trader algorithm, proprietary trading, and also risk management solution provider. Okay, and fund manager actually consists of mutual funds um, and also ETF. Okay, 
Okay, uh, now we are going to assess the advantage of trading these uh, contracts, uh, which is also the reason why this category of uh, participants participate in these products. Okay, first thing is uh, traceability. It is because the top 10 large cap counter of the indexes com actually comprise 60% weightage of the indexes. So, so this make it uh, e easy to trace if you follow the top 10 counters as to, to gauge the movement of the indexes. Okay, a second thing of course is it's high liquidity as it is a free market and world financial hub. So there are heavy participants ar around the world in these contracts. So you don't have problem getting out or in with uh, slippage. Okay, of course, cost is safe effectiveness. All contracts are actually traded in margin basis set by the exchange and also carrying house. So you are actually need a relatively small um, capital to have exposure in these contracts. Okay, of course, efficient market. All the standard type future contracts are actually being conducted in a transparent and efficient manner. The market are uh, actually under Hong Kong Exchange administration. And in terms of the counterparty risk, it is actually guaranteed by the Hong Kong Financial uh, Exchange Caring Corporation. So there won't be any counterparty risk of default here. The risk is minimal. Wherever there is a default, uh, actually the caring how will, will actually take up that role to, to honor the, the positions, okay? In terms of volatility, it is actually huge intraday volatility, which is very ideal for intraday trading. And also tradability. Okay, if you really are not only a technical analysis trader, it is actually quite tradable using these technical signals. Later, I will show you in the coming slides. Okay, in terms of exposure, uh, you can actually gain access to Hong Kong and China market by only trading in these two um, main contract without having to buy the individual counters. Okay, and compared to you buy all the uh, counters, this trading, this uh, two contract is actually more focused and concentrated because of the, if you invest in the individual blue chip counter, you might have price fluctuated differently. Let's say you invested in 20 counters, maybe like half of it will go up, half of it will go down, which actually net to net, your performance is somewhat uh, contra of. But if you invest in the futures, it's more concentrated and it is quite uh, easy to and direct exposure where the index is up, meaning it's up and down is down. Says, so this is, this is very concentrated. Okay, of course the low transaction cost. Okay, compared to you trade individual stock, the transaction cost is relatively low in trading this index futures contract because uh, the contract uh, val notion value is quite high, but you, you are being charged in terms of commission of per lot basis, rather than if you uh, trade the individual stock, the commission that you pay or bookage that you pay are based on percentage of the value of the stock. So in that sense, it is lower in terms of transaction cost. Okay, of course, uh, with long history of these indexes, it is a proven market that has been uh, acknowledged by global financial centers and also investors. And for the mini contract, it is actually a tailor-made contract that suits retail investor. So, so th the contract actually uh, offer with a lower margin so that the in retail investor can pass participate in this index futures contract. Okay, uh, this will be uh, the slide that I show you the tradability by following the technical signals. Okay, this uh, the coming eight slide is uh, I'm using a back testing under Bloomberg term terminal. Okay, the first four slide is I back test using the MACD indicators. As you can see here that um, I'm trading only one lot. 
uh, with 500k Hong Kong dollar capital, of course. And then um, with a uh, commission set is 100 Hong Kong dollar per way per site. And this is uh, always in the market strategy where if the MACD cross is cross up the signal, you do a buy long one lot. And then when the MACD do a cross below the signal line, you cover your long position and turn short yeah, at the same time. So it is a always in the market strategy as you can see that it is giving you a positive uh, expectancy and this is the period covering not just one or two years but it's about 10 years of data okay similarly the mini hangsei contract of course the x ratio is different due to the smaller contract size i'm using 200 thousand hong kong dollar capital with two lots exposure each time so as you is also a positive expectancy result. And this is the hash share you know, standard contracts. 200,000, two lots, positive expectancy. And the mini hash share, which is also positive expectancy. Okay, next will be the backtesting using the RSI indicators. So this is also similar to the previous strategy. This is also always in the market strategy where if the market goes below 30 and cross up above 30, you do a buy. And after that, when it cross above 70 and started to cross down below 70, you do a cover of your long position and then turn short. So also 10 years data, okay, positive expectancy. And next, Mini Hang Seng, also positive expectancy. As you can see, RSI actually generate relatively uh, slower frequency of signal as compared to Mac MACD just now. Okay, uh, hash share standard contracts. Okay, positive expectancy. And this is the Mini hash share positive expectancy. Okay, um, please be a reminder I'm not actually encouraged being used to trade with this signal. This is only a back testing conducted to show you that uh, you can actually um, for trade with the technical indicators alone without having doing assessment fundamentally or assessing the news purely on technical. So that is the purpose of this slide. I'm not encouraging that you treat with this and you have to assess your risk appetite when using this. Okay. I have to put a disclaimer on this. Okay. In terms of factors impacting these two indexes, I do an assessment. Okay. I found out that, um, Due to the financial status of Hong Kong, this cat, the high, category, high impact category, category will be those uh, equity market performance of US and Asia. Okay, um, a little bit of elaboration here. <clears throat> the overnight closing of the US market have uh, quite a significant influence on the opening of these two indexes, uh, uh, futures contract. And after that, after like about 30 minutes of the market open, and then it will start to gauge the movement of the Asia equity market performance. And of course, the second will be those large caps um, related uh, stock earning announcement or corporate news that is going to affect the, the weighting of the indexes. And here, because of this is, this is quite a big impact historically in Hong Kong, I actually categorize this as high impact because of the SARS that happened before. They're having a huge impact on their economy and also the index performance. Okay, in terms of uh, the economic data of uh, GDP, inflation, manufacturing, exports, it will have a moderate impact. Okay, so here you have to be aware that this is not the economic data come out that recorded increase or decrease that that have the impact. It is whether whether the economic data release is above or below expectation. I mean, um, 
that is going to have an impact. Let's say assuming that the forecast of the economic economic data for GDP example, they forecast that it is up by one percent example, but the econ real economic data come out as um, it GDP increased by two percent. So the above uh, forecast data will actually have a positive impact on the market. So where else the below expectation will have a negative uh, impact on the market. So you have to gauge the economic data based on the forecast and not the economic data year and year, quarter to quarter basis. Okay, of course, but if you have a consecutive of a decline or risk in economic data, so that is going to impact in investor sentiment and thus will impact the index performance also. And also, of course, uh, extreme high and low economic data that is way be beyond expectation, of course, is going to impact the indexes. And I have do the assessment, it is actually having a relatively low uh, impact on interest rate announcement. Relatively, in if you compare the impact of Federal Reserve interest rate policy with Dow Jones performance, uh, Hong Kong relatively is low impact. Hong Kong index will react rather not react to the economic data as compared to others um, country. Okay, of course, currency rate fluctuation as this is a managed uh, back to the U back to the U.S. dollar movement. So Hong Kong dollar movement doesn't have a uh, quite a huge impact on the index movement. Okay, this the next few slide you purely on the uh, graph of economic data to show give you a rough idea what is the current state of the of the economy. Okay, this is the GDP as you can see, uh, financial crisis here, and do a recovery and it has been doing a gradual slowness ever since. Okay, in terms of exports, this. Export actually consists of both um, services and also products. Uh, this is uh, the employment. Uh, employment is relatively low actually. And, and, and recently for the last year is actually near historical low. But uh, due to the unrest, um, unemployment has slightly picked up. But still it is in a manageable level. Okay, this is the interest rate. Inflation, which is in a manageable level currently. Okay, as uh, there is limited land and a huge demand for the housing, I show uh, inflation housing data here. It shows you that the, uh, the severe of how house price in Hong Kong affecting the people of Hong Kong. Okay, this is the movement of uh, Hong Kong dollar. As you can see, this is pretty much uh, contained within a manageable range of uh, point less than 0.2, actually. Okay, I do a correlation um, checks. Uh, this is doing correlation for the past two years as compared to uh, first thing other indexes and then commodity and also some uh, uh, currencies and also economic data. As you can see here, <coughs> the higher correlation between the Hang Seng Index is com with the Asian Index here. As you can see that uh, these uh, top five indexes are actually trading either at the same time or maybe one hour earlier than Hang Seng Index itself. Okay. Okay, and it have not much correlation to a uh, major commodity like crude oil, gasoline. And I do a check uh, on the biggest import of Hong Kong is in terms of value is actually diamond. But even that, is having a very uh, low correlationship, 
But of course, on the other side, the inverse most negative correlation will be the Hong Kong inflation and China renminbi offshore. This but point two is not really significant, of course, but has so the highlight here will be the correlation with the Asia, uh, especially especially uh, East Asia countries indexes. Okay. Okay, next we'll be covering some data on China for the hash share index. Okay, as you can see, uh, China GDP has peaked. This is uh, so ex this will be actually the 10 year exponential growth with, of course, intervening. This is actually affected by the financial crisis and doing recovery ever since. But after year 2010, it's best as actually normalizing which is currently still achieving 6% GDP growth which is quite uh, strong as compared to a lot of developed country. Okay, this is the China export in terms of value. Okay, you can don't be uh, um, what you call this shocked by the drastic drop here. Okay, uh, all the drastic drop here is actually data for February, which is mostly the Chinese New Year. And also in the between, you will have some short drop also like this. And don't be shocked by that. That is actually their um, golden week holiday for their national holiday. Okay. So this is a year-on-year -year performance export. Okay, currently is still a uh, recorded slowness, 0.9, negative 0.9%. Okay, next is the uh, manufacturing. It's been normalizing ever since year 2010. Okay, inflation uh, currently is spiking up. Okay, this is the China Roman beef offshore. Uh, why com only offshore? Because onshore is pretty much uh, controlled by the central banks. So we, we take the offshore rate, which is fluctuated freely. As you can see, uh, Roman beef has been appreciating compared to the US dollar. Okay, this is the core relation between the hash share with others, uh, indexes, commodity, and also economic data. As you can see here, of course, still similar to Hang Seng Index, is having a high relation with, with all the East Asian country indexes. Uh, of course, exception will be Singapore, which is the Southeast Asia. And um, China imports having 0.42 and then on the opposite side is uh, inflation. Okay, uh, conventionally all the countries inflation will have an inverse relationship with the index performance. Okay. Okay, in terms of uh, commodity, this index is most sensitive to copper price movement. Okay, I'll this will be the last section of the presentations, which covering technical outlook. Okay, as you can see here, um, for the near term, uh, actually, market has actually somewhat breached the near term down downtrend line in green color. So it is currently uh, still trading sideways. Okay, but on the longer time frame, the red line downtrend is resistant line is yet to be broken. So, but but it haven't penetrated the support line of uh, two twenty five thousand also. So, for this chart on the weekly basis, technically, is it actually suggesting a sideways range bound market? And okay, uh, direction view new direction will be determined if the major support or resistance is broken. Okay, other indicators 
ISI is neutral, MACD is somewhat uh, negative, it's still below zero. So basically, uh, overall, yes, it is in a moderate uh, downtrend market, but car at current state is actually in a range bound movement. Okay, this is the hash share weekly chart. Also similar to Hang Seng, it is overall in a downtrend, but it is currently testing resistance, as you can see. And the support and major support and resistance is yet to be broken, so it's still a range bound market for now. Okay, point figure chart. Okay, mini Hang Seng, each box is uh, 250 points, three box reversal. As you can see, it has a uh, break above the, uh, actually there is a double bottom formation here with a break, but whether they will be followed through and break the major red line resistance is still within the range bound market yet to be determined. Okay, um, this is the point and figure for hash share, mini hash share index futures. 100 point per box, 3 box reversals, also in a drown trend, still within range bound market. Okay, uh, so overall market outlook summary, we are actually neutral to moderately bearish technically and fundamentally for the remaining of this year, as long as the key resistance hold. Okay, um, protest is somewhat still ongoing, but at a reduced uh, participation rate. Okay, you have to, uh, then China economy has actually peaked and the GDP growth you, it has starting to normalize, but still it is achieving growth. So due to that, um, it is we really maintain a neutral outlook and moderately bearish outlook. Okay, and then what happening in China is the China corporate bond default rate is at historical high. This is actually due to the over exp expansion and also over giving credit to corporates that is resulted to this default rate. So in terms of strategy, if you are doing long trades, buy and buy first and sell later, basically it is advisable to buy on weakness supports or over, overdone, meaning oversold. Okay, made it short term. If you see money, take money. But of course, see losses, auto take losses. Because you never know um, the, push, the, push, the direction against you will evolve into a trend because ultimately you are currently in range pound. So there's no trend, but it might evolve to an uptrend or downtrend. We never know. But so, if you if you see that it is in losing position, just cut and 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 look for opportunity again. Avoid holding too long, ideally less than two days, and no over the weekend trades. If you were to do a short trade, so basically you can actually sell on negative news, resistance or retracement, and be conscious if the major re resistance broken, it could turn turn to a bullish market, but. In terms of if the key support is broken, you can actually sell on breakdown or sell if the if there is downward movement momentum and you can actually hold slightly longer and trail your stop accordingly to profit to protect your profit if there is any. Okay, uh some commercial here. Um uh, for our client, we actually pro uh, provide uh the services to our client will be an advanced trading platform execution platform with uh, free charting software uh, with no charges to our client. Uh, you'll be receiving daily commentary covering the market you treat. Of course, you'll be receiving market related news via email and also what apps broadcast. Okay, in the event you have things that you don't understand and you would like to uh, discover more, we actually offer one-to-one -one tutorial in covering your the, the topics that you want to to learn or question. So please call us to make an appointment. Okay, and we actually currently having a 23 hour dealing desk where our dealer are ready to serve you with other execution, technical supports or other trading account related services. 
Okay, uh, so with that, I conclude the presentation and leave room for questions. Back to you, Nicholas. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. So uh, should you have any further queries, please feel free to drop us an email at bcrm.kunanga.com.my. We appreciate you being here and hope that you enjoy the webinar tonight. Thank you and good night. What are you clicking? Click kanangafutures.com.my, Malaysia's leading derivatives broker.